The N-word was carved, carved, etched with a box cutter into the bare skin of a colored member of the swim team. One of the only colored members by someone who they thought was a friend, someone who they could trust. The family statement confirms this and says it was etched across his chest. Last week, the college said plastic or ceramic toll was used to scratch the slur into the student's body. I can't fathom as to why someone would go to that length, as to why a monster like this, and there's no more appropriate term to use, would do this to someone else. A person, a human being. Rosario says he's from Kensington, Philadelphia. AKA what a lot of people call zombie town because of the drug epidemic going on at the moment. But now I can say I probably feel more safe there than here with what just happened. The college sharing a statement from them and the family. It says in part, a heinous act can serve as a transformative moment for Gettysburg College to live up to its ideals of diversity, inclusion, and justice. A criminal complaint has not been filed with the Gettysburg Police. The department says the victim has decided to let the college handle the matter. In a world that prides itself on progress and enlightenment, the specter of racism continues to cast a long shadow over our society. The roots of this deep-seated prejudice stretch far beyond individual interactions. They are nurtured in the very households that shape young minds. The insidious truth is that racism is not an innate trait. It is a learned behavior passed down from generation to generation. The harsh reality is that children absorb the beliefs and attitudes of their parents, and when those beliefs are steeped in racism, the cycle of hatred is perpetuated. From an early age, children are impressionable. They observe the world around them, absorbing the cues that inform their understanding of social dynamics. When parents exhibit prejudiced behavior, whether through overt expressions of hate or more subtle, insidious comments, children internalize these messages. It's not just the explicit remarks that cause harm. It's the nuanced behaviors, the eye rolls, the dismissive comments about people of different races. These interactions create a framework through which children learn to view the world and, ultimately, each other. Consider a family gathered around the dinner table. Conversations may seem innocent enough, but beneath the surface lies a breeding ground for bias. When a parent casually dismisses a news story about a black individual, attributing negative stereotypes to them, they are sending a clear message to their child that this group is less than, that they are not to be respected or understood. Over time, these ideas solidify morphing into ingrained beliefs that shape how a child interacts with others. By the time they reach adulthood, these individuals are often unaware of how their worldview has been molded by the prejudices of their upbringing. Schools can provide a counterbalance to this familial influence, but the effectiveness of education is often undermined by societal attitudes that seep into classrooms. Children arrive at school with preconceived notions rooted in their home environments. If their parents harbor racist beliefs, these children may struggle to engage with classmates who do not share their background or appearance. They may echo their parents' biases, creating an atmosphere of division rather than one of inclusion. Teachers, who are often under-resourced and overwhelmed, may not be equipped to address these deeply ingrained beliefs, leaving students to navigate their prejudices largely unchallenged. Furthermore, media plays a crucial role in reinforcing or dismantling stereotypes. Children are exposed to a barrage of messages about race, many of which perpetuate harmful narratives. When popular culture perpetuates images of certain races as violent, lazy, or untrustworthy, children who have been taught to view the world through a biased lens are likely to accept these portrayals as truth. The result is a cycle that seems unbreakable with each generation carrying forward the weight of inherited prejudices. The challenge, then, is profound. It requires not only recognizing the problem, but actively working to dismantle the structures that uphold it. Parents must confront their own biases and commit to fostering an environment of understanding and empathy.
This includes engaging in difficult conversations about race, acknowledging past wrongs, and actively working to raise children who appreciate diversity rather than fear it. Schools must implement comprehensive anti-bias curricula, empowering educators to address these issues head on and create inclusive spaces where all children can thrive. Ultimately, the fight against racism is a collective responsibility. Each person must reflect on their own beliefs and behaviors, recognizing that change begins at home. It is crucial to understand that while the cycle of hate may be deeply entrenched, it is not insurmountable. Through education, open dialogue, and a commitment to empathy, we can raise a generation of children who see the humanity in one another, rather than the divisions that society often emphasizes. The future depends on it.